Good morning. Let me uh, add my thanks to Neil and Lisa and all the uh, Sunday School crew, uh, leaders and children. That was absolutely fantastic. I had my mask on, but if you could see my face under my mask, I was smiling the whole way through because that was absolutely fantastic. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, we're going to have a look at this uh, chapter of Isaiah. We've been working through Isaiah 7 to 9 during Advent. Last week was pretty grim as we sort of spent a bit of time in the darkness of Isaiah 8 as the Assyrian army came towards God's people uh, to devastate them. And then in chapter 9 now we're going to see the hope, this child, this child we've just heard about in that nativity story who has come to bring light and hope. So let's pray as we come to this passage together. Lord, thank you so much that your word in the Bible is good news for those in darkness. Christmas is good news for all of us. As we saw in that nativity play, it's news that is to be shared. It's news to make our hearts delight. So please, Lord, inspire us this morning to love you more and be more thankful for all Jesus has done. Amen. To us... A child is born. What will this child be like? I think that's on my uh, current. What will this child be like? What will this baby be like? Maybe you've asked that question if your parents here and uh, you've got a little baby. What's it going to be like when it grows up? Maybe uh, children. You've got a you've got a parent or you've got a uh, a niece or a nephew, uh, you've, got, you've got a, a child and you think, what, what are they going to be like when they grow up? And then I don't know if, if you're like me, uh, if you're a parent or you know young children, as they sort of get a bit older, you sort of try and analyse their personality, don't, don't you? And think they're going to be, they're going to be clever, they're going to be cheeky, they're going to be kind, or they're going to be like uh, mummy or, or daddy. And it's really hard to know, isn't it? What is this child going to be like in Isaiah chapter 9? This very special child. This is written about 750 years before Jesus was born. And yet we're told exactly what this child is going to be like. Isn't that amazing? God had it planned this whole time. This is a child who's part of God's plan to save people from darkness and bring them in to light. This is part of God's plan to to save people from distress and sin and bring them into God's kingdom. So what's this child going to be like? Well, we've got on the screen there a couple of things, haven't we? Have a look at, at that verse. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. A couple of things we see from that verse. First, he's going to be human, isn't he? But he's also going to be God. He's going to be born from a woman, which means he's fully man. But he's, he's going to be divine. He's going to be mighty God. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? So he's going to be fully man and fully God. Now let me ask you a question, especially for you younger folk. Are you like your mum or your dad? A bit of both is. I've got a picture here, I think, of my family, or certainly the nicer part of it, which means not me. Um, there you are. There's Ezra and Naomi. Do, do they look like their mum or their dad? What do you think? Hands up if you think they look like their mum. Oh. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Hands up if you think they look like their dad. Yeah. A few less. A bit of both, isn't it? Yeah. There you go. Good luck from the mum. Well, sorry, next slide, John. Jesus, 
was like both his mum and his dad. He was like his mum. He was truly human, flesh and blood. He was a baby who was completely human. So like any baby, he cried. Like any baby, Jesus did smelly poos. He did. He made lots of mess. Is anything like mine? He used to grab everything out of the cupboards. He learned to crawl. He learned to walk. He learned to speak. But he was also like his dad, like his father, who was God. Joseph was sort of his stepfather, wasn't he? But God was his father. That means Jesus had all power. He had all knowledge. He had all importance. And yet he chose to live his life in serving others. That's amazing, isn't it? That's what this child is like. Human and God. And then secondly, he's going to be a great ruler. That's why he's got a crown on that slide. He's going to be, we read in that verse, wise and caring and strong. And if you've been in Isaiah with us for the last two weeks, you'd have met Ahaz, the king. And he was none of those things. But Jesus is the king. He's wise and strong and caring and is going to bring peace. But how long is Jesus going to rule for? I've got some pictures here of people who've ruled uh, over time. There we go. Uh, at the top, you've got Maggie. At the right, you've got the Queen. At the bottom, you've got King Ahaz from Isaiah. And you've got Louis the Fourteenth on the left. If you're at home, maybe chat to the person next to you. Who do you think's ruled the longest? How long did they rule for? Any, any guesses here? Queen. Queen? How long she ruled for? 68 years? Nine. Won't tell everyone that, Margaret. <laughs> so you have a look, next slide. 68 years, but actually Louis the 14th is the longest reigning monarch. 72 years. Maggie was only there for 11. She wasn't really a queen, was she? And then King Ahaz in Isaiah, only 16 years. Um, So 72 years is the longest ruling monarch. Do you think Jesus can beat that? Yeah, what did we see? Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. He is the king, next slide, who rules forever. And that's great because anytime there's any sort of half decent king in the Bible, what happens is they die and then their son's normally pretty rubbish. We need a king who's gonna rule perfectly forever. This child is gonna be that king isn't that great so that's who this king this child is human and god a king forever but what will this child bring what will he do will he be a good king will he do good for his people because imagine having a really bad king forever that would be awful wouldn't it imagine having a rubbish king who ruled forever life would be pretty horrible Well, what kind of king will Jesus be? We'll have a look at verse three. Let me read it. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as men rejoice when dividing the plunder. Jesus is a king who will bring joy. It's the kind of joy that you might get when you get a bumper crop at harvest. Now, we don't really think about harvest and that anymore but but maybe it's the equivalent next slide of getting a bumper crop of christmas presents at christmas imagine if you got all those presents imagine the joy that's the kind of joy that jesus will bring he'll provide abundantly for his people there'll be plenty for everyone 
under Jesus's rule. Or it's the kind of joy when, when maybe an, an enemy army has been defeated and there's victory and there's peace. I think at the end of the war, end of the Second World War, everyone's celebrating. That's the kind of joy that Jesus, this child, is going to bring. It's the joy of having your burdens taken away. The yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor will be shattered, we see in verse 4. Next slide, please, John. The Bible says that, that actually there's a lot that burdens us, isn't there? I know everyone has got something on their minds. We've all got burdens and weights on our minds, haven't we? On our, on our shoulders. Now, maybe some of you youngsters won't, won't know this band, which makes me feel old. But when I was a bit younger, I used to love a band. Well, they weren't really a band. They were a pop group called S Club 7. <laughs> and one of their lyrics when the world is on, I won't sing it, when the world is on your shoulders, just smile and let it go. That's what they say. But here's the problem. It's not as easy as that, is it? If anyone's been around a bit, you can't just do that. You can't just get rid of your responsibilities. It actually just often makes things worse. You sort of try and get rid of your responsibility. There's always something, there's always something that burdens us. And actually the Bible says what's more, all of us have the burden of sin. All of us have messed up. All of us have failed to treat God properly. All of us have failed to treat each other properly. We might make up and try and be nice to each other over Christmas for one day. But actually, let's face it, there's a lot of issues in our lives. And the Bible says that sin that, that we all have will eventually sink us. It will weigh us down and break us. But in this passage, we see this child has come to bring freedom from our burdens. Jesus actually means God saves. He came to save us from our sin. See, what's amazing is this child grew up with the power of God and yet fully human. A king who knew he would rule forever. But he didn't use his power to oppress. He didn't use his power to ward around. He used his power to save. He used his power to take our burdens away. He did that by dying on the cross. On the cross, he took our sin on himself. On the cross, he, he took the consequences of that sin, the punishment it deserves, bore our sorrows, bore our iniquities. And on the cross, he shattered that yoke. He shattered that burden forever. This child came to give us freedom, joy, freedom. And that means we can have peace with God and actually peace with each other. Jesus didn't stay there, did he? He rose again after three days. And that proved that he really was this promised child of Isaiah 9. He really was this king who could rule forever. Death could not stop him. And that proves that one day Jesus will return. And on that day, he'll set all things right. There'll be an end to war. There'll be no need for warrior's boots. There'll be no more garments rolled in blood. There'll be no guns. There'll be no hospitals. There'll be no need for a vaccine. Because Jesus will bring peace forever. His resurrection from the dead proves that. He is this child of Isaiah chapter 9. And that's why we can have joy this Christmas. Looking at social media uh, yesterday and today, many people feel their joy have been, has been taken away because of the current restrictions and new restrictions. And in a sense, that's right, isn't it? 
it's hard to go without relationship. But ultimately, we can find joy in a relationship with God through this child who grew up to be a saviour, Jesus Christ. We can find joy in our burdens lifted. We can find joy in a world where peace reigns. Jesus is this child of Isaiah 9 who came to save those in darkness, who came for those who were burdened, who came for those who were weighed down by sin. He came for me, he came for you, he came for everyone to bring joy. This last verse that was read of this reading really struck me this week. It's, it's on the screen there. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish all this. I've recently been grilled at an interview. <laughs> Imagine if you were to interview God and say to God, God, what are you passionate about? What drives you? What are you zealous about? You know what God would say? He said, he would say, I am excited about saving you. I've been planning it for ages. I am motivated by bringing people out of darkness into light. My zeal is to save people and forgive them and bring them peace. I will move heaven and earth to bring joy and light to a dark world. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. And in Jesus, that's exactly what God has done. Isn't that amazing? If that doesn't lift our hearts this Christmas, I don't know what will. Let's, uh, let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much that you are zealous to save us, to bring us to Jesus into the light. Lord, for those of us who already know Jesus and trust him, we pray that you would deepen our joy and our peace and our trust this year. For those of us who maybe aren't looking forward to Christmas that much, Lord, we pray that you'd help us to fix our gaze to Jesus, the one who came to save us and give us life. And Lord, we pray that we be those who share this great message, that maybe this Christmas there'll be those of us here who for the first time choose to trust and follow this child born for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.